so much stuff right now is is quote unquote trendy and and we're definitely not a trendy band you know we, we pretty much break away from the cookie cutter so I think people appreciate that John and I would like to uh, recite a Beavis and Butthead skit for you if we may oh we would please do please do <laughs> I'm really on the spot now uh, 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 Archok is cool hey Beavis uh, <laughs> come on give us a Beavis Six eight is more of like a three four feel, which is the equivalent. So it's more of like a three four and seven eight feel. But what I'm doing is I'm playing uh, the first set of thirteen, you know, which it equals to, uh, uh, like with a downbeat feel, and then the second set is an upbeat feel. So it's alternating back and forth. So there's a lot of different polyrhythms going on all at once. I grew up it, doing the radio show with him, and, and you Did know, you? spinning. Re he'd let me spin the records. How old were you? This was around 73, 74, so I was around six or seven. And I would, you know, I'd want to play Cheech and Chong records and stuff like that. <laughs> and and he, he would let me just pick whatever I want. My first taste of fame was placing a call, a collect call to the operator, and the operator recognized my voice because she listens to the radio show. No way! As yeah, a, I was, as I was a like six kid? or seven years old. Yeah. Let's get right into song. I mean, God, the, the list of rock and metal casualties to drug abuse, it's, it's, it's scary. And, you know, I, I myself, I'm a, you know, recovering alcoholic and addict, and, and I'm very fortunate to be here and to have escaped the clutches of, you know, of, of addiction. Um, but you see people like Lane and Mike and, and so many others that, that weren't as fortunate and, and really struggled with those demons. And it's sad. And, and I, I have a lot of compassion because I know how hard it is. song of the set and I just bit off more than I could chew with a fill and I just thought I was Superman and I was going to do the fastest fill ever and I just went around the toms and next thing I knew it felt like a muscle cramp and I looked down and my wrist was completely twisted the opposite direction. The palm of, palm of my hand was literally facing up while holding the drumstick and I completely dislocated my wrist, spun around and it, I just turned blue. It was the scariest thing I had ever seen and literally I had to like bang my hand on the tom to like try to snap it back into place and I played the rest of the song with one hand while my tech was 
putting it on ice. I couldn't deprive them of the encore, so I went up and played uh, the last song of the set one-handed. I figured if Rick Allen could do it, I could do it. I put way more uh, emphasis or interest on a drummer's like uh, personality than technique. I mean, there's so many amazing drummers out there that have incredible technique, mm. uh, but honestly, it's impressive, but it completely bores the shit out of me. I mean, yeah. I'm not interested in that. I, I would much rather watch somebody like Keith Moon or Lars Ulrich uh, because they're on stage with personality and they're fun to watch. And so that's what's gonna catch my, my ears and eyes a lot more than technique, to be honest with you. I mean, that's why Keith Moon was like the guy that made me want to be the drummer I am. I mean, when I saw him playing drums and standing up and bouncing his sticks and twirling and just like, I was like, man, that's what I wanna be.